Greetings and welcome. I am Just a Vore, bringing what I hope is constructive information on the system of white supremacy, what it is and how it works in an effort to replace white supremacy with a system of justice. In this video, I have found is a rare look at the author of the United Independent Compensatory Code System concept, Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. When he appeared on Color Me Poetry uh, and was interviewed by Mr. Danny Queen. This is a rare opportunity to see an interview with Mr. Fuller as Mr. Fuller does many, many radio interviews. You can hear his voice quite often um, even today, he does several programs a week, um, expounding on the code uh, in his own personal efforts to replace white supremacy with justice, but also to help victims of racism better understand the code book, uh, its word guide, and many of the concepts contained within. So I would like to play this video to introduce those who are unfamiliar with Mr. Fuller and his work to the basic concepts of the code book. Here we go. The five basic words to describe what needs to be done. Well, when you put it in the frame of reference, everyone, when they talk about racism and our white supremacy should always start by saying that the focus, the objective should be replace white supremacy mm -hmm. with justice. Those are the five basic words. Mm -hmm. And you start your frame of reference from that. The words are very important because when people talk about racism, mm -hmm. they tend to get away from the basic focus. If you keep those five words in mind, replace white supremacy with justice, then you can keep focus in many of these discussions, people, discussions on the matter, people tend to get into everything from feminism to uh, words that don't have precise Communism definitions. and everything else, they go off yes. on a tangent. Yes, right. Yeah, but this uh, kind of locks it in. Right, bigotry, discrimination, yeah. uh, sexism, uh, a multitude of isms. A biracialism, whatever that means, multiculturalism. Whatever that means. Yes. <laughs> and so you get into a myriad of words mm -hmm. that don't apply to the focus of what you're talking about. Mm. So therefore, that is the basic frame of reference that you should always focus on. That should be used by all people mm -hmm. who are talking about the problem as it is. Mm. Mr. Fuller makes a great point here. Focusing on the goal, keeping it concise and to the point as much as possible will make it less possible for people to stray you away from those goals, to become distracted and focused on something else. Um, if you've studied the system of racism, if you've studied white supremacy, you will notice that that is the primary tactic that many people who practice racism will use. Instead of getting to the heart of the problem, they will try to lead your focus off to any other subsequent problem, any other symptom of the primary problem, which is racism, white supremacy. Um, a big conversation right now, as it often has been, is the so-called gender war, uh, feminism, patriarchy, uh, misandry and other things when the heart of all of these problems when it comes to non-white people especially those classified as black is a system of white supremacy if we were to focus on the system and what needs to be done we can ensure that the rest of the problems will also be solved replace white supremacy with justice. What is a tragic arrangement or the three T's, if you will, and what are, are some of the first two things that must be done to establish quality relationship between white and uh, non-white people, if you will? Well, the 
three T's called a tragic arrangement mm -hmm. are tacky, trashy, terroristic. Now, this is the arrangement okay. that non-white people on this planet have with white people in their everyday interactions in all areas of activity. Tacky, trashy, tacky, trashy and terroristic. One of the three. It doesn't get any better than tacky. Mm -hmm. If you will observe black people, for instance, in the presence of white people on account of the way that both of them are raised mm -hmm. within the system of white supremacy, there is a strain there. There, There is not a even flow. Okay. So what you have is a tackiness. It doesn't get any better than tacky. It can't get any better than tacky within the system of white supremacy. Why? So this is all very tragic. Well, because the system of white supremacy uh, the, the demands that mm -hmm. white people interact with non-white people in a certain way that is mm -hmm. harmful and harsh and overall destructive. Mm -hmm. And that the non-white people interact with the white people in the same manner. And they are taught this, mm -hmm. both people are taught this, are taught this at a very early age. And then the teaching goes on every day in all nine areas of activity, economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war. All areas of people activity. All of the areas of people activity. You know, and I'm we're in a known universe. Mr. Fuller, um, again, makes an excellent point. Um, he stated that the system of white supremacy demands that white people, those who classify themselves as white, interact with non-white people in a manner that will allow non-white people to be dominated by those who classify themselves as white. So the very basic uh, way that you could describe these interactions are tacky, trashy, and terroristic. And as Mr. Fuller says, it doesn't get any better than tacky. I mean, at the very, very least, you would describe, you could accurately describe the interactions between white people and their victims as tacky. All of this accumulates to it being called, uh, all of this accumulates to what is termed a tragic arrangement. Mr. Fuller also points out uh, several things in this uh, short uh, clip. He's trying to expound on the code. If you've read the code book, um, there, there's much information to go over. There's a lot of details, but this very informative information contained within the code that is a benefit to non-white people who want to understand the problems that we are having. Um, and how we can conduct ourselves through thought, speak, and action in a way that helps to replace white supremacy with justice. In this interview, Mr. Fuller tries to hit all the main points. I think he does a great job of hitting the main points for those who are unfamiliar with the this thought process of breaking down the problem of white supremacy in a way that is going to benefit non-white people. Mr. Fuller goes over the nine areas of people's activity, the nine major areas of people's activity, which are economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war. You know, I noticed something. Uh, I used to work with a gentleman, uh, elderly gentleman, and whenever he would come in contact with white people, he always had a tendency uh, to have to be the entertainment committee to make everybody laugh. If we were on the elevator or doing something in the building, he was always the person to make white people laugh. He was always the clown. Yes. I always kept a straight face, so he thought something was wrong with me. Yes, well, you can tell that there is a strain even on college campuses and whatnot mm -hmm. and in schools. Uh, uh, the people will go to the classes together because that's where the classes are. They, they, uh, you know, that's where the teaching is. And then the students will separate themselves in the lunchroom. Now, there's a reason for that. And the reason is not healthy. It shows that something is completely, completely out of order. Mm -hmm. Because if the people are sharing the same classroom and learning the same things and having the same values that are taught in that classroom, then why do not the people interact with each other in all of the areas of activity without exception 
in harmony. Well, maybe then. Mr. Fuller has twice brought up the fact that the conditioning of white people to practice racism, as well as the conditioning of black people or and other non-white people to act as victims of racism starts at an early age. You can see this uh, in children from the earliest of ages, even to later on in life when they go into the cafeteria and they separate themselves into what are usually termed as cliques, you know, their little social groups. And I grew up in a, a place where it was not that many uh, non-white people, especially black people, but you would see uh, many of these cliques were based on primarily on your race and then on other things such as whatever activities you were involved with in school or if there were extracurricular activities or certain groups or clubs that you are part of those students would often sit with one another um, as they socialize with one another in the halls or in class they share that extra uh, uh, bond as uh, as you could see um, but one primary way the students would group themselves would be based on their racial classifications and Mr. Fuller sees that also as a problem which it is a problem because if we're supposed to be working together in harmony if we're all supposed to be equal there should not be a need to feel comfortable within these other groups because one should already feel comfortable amongst their so-called peers that is one of the motivations behind this channel um, and is one of the reasons why I try to approach speaking about these conversations. Um, I would like to focus to be on teaching the children as early as possible about the system of racism. Uh, many non-white children, especially black children, don't realize the hardships that are waiting for them um, as they get older. Or due to the system of racism, many of our children are walking around with targets on their back, invisible targets on their back. Um, that's and as a uh, attempted parent uh, who attempts to love my children, uh, who cares uh, for my children greatly, one thing I could not see myself doing is sending my children out into the world to compete for resources. Um, and in a life knowing that they have this target on their back and trying to convince them that it is not there that the target doesn't exist knowing that my child is going to be targeted and they're going to feel the effects of being targeted they're going to be mistreated and victimized because of their racial classification and other reasons and if i want to accurately and effectively help my children with these problems, I have to give them the best tools as possible. And the first would be an awareness and a understanding, a proper understanding of the world around them and how that world works. We happen to live in a world that is ran on a system of white supremacy. And not learning the same thing. That is it. Maybe they taught the same thing, but yes, not that, that, the same that thing. is it. Under the system of white supremacy, a black student sitting next to a white student mm -hmm. is being taught how to be a victim of white supremacy. The white person, the white student, mm -hmm. is being taught how to be a white supremacist. And it's all in this the language. This is done in the language, in yes. the use of the words, in the subject matter of the materials. If the material in any way Mm -hmm. relates to interactions between people. Mm. Now, the other three, uh, two T's, trashy, if you try to improve on the tackiness, mm -hmm. then it gets tack, uh, trashy, Me the interactions what? between. Uh, for instance, uh, you can say that uh, in the area of religion, mm -hmm. Sunday morning, black people and white people do not attend the same churches. Dr. King says the most segregated hour in America. Right. Now, that is tacky, particularly in the area of religion. It should not be. Mm -hmm. The two people should come together in religion, if in nothing else. It would seem logically speaking. But under the system of racism, 
since the basic teaching of mm -hmm. the white supremacy system is that white supremacy is a religion, so you have a built-in barrier already against yeah. black people and white people sharing the same premises and preaching the same gospel and talking about loving each other and treating each other uh, with justice. So therefore you can't have what you call black people and white people in the same religious setting, which is why you don't have it. So, so you what have... you do have, and I'd like to add this, mm -hmm. is the trashiness that goes on the same Sunday morning, mm -hmm. and that is maybe in the houses of prostitution, mm -hmm. in the houses of dope dealing, then you will have black and white together. <laughs> That's the only same time day place. on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's interesting that you would say that because uh, you have these two groups and we both say we're Christian. We have white Baptists, then we have black Baptists. And we're supposed to be worshiping the same God, uh, if yes, you will. Yes, one in Christ, <laughs> they often say. Mm -hmm. And that is something that not even many black people care to explain. Mm -hmm. That they say we are, you know, in Christ there is no east, no west, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yet, to black people and the white people, cannot sit down in the same bench in a church. I find it interesting, uh, speaking of religion, that you could have Billy Graham come to town and all the black ministers start bowing down. Minister Louis Farrakhan comes and there's controversy. <laughs> well, that is because of the race issue. Mm -hmm, as well. It's always, always because of the race issue. You can't do anything. You can't straighten out anything in religion or any of the nine areas of activity without first eliminating racism and here again there's only one functional form and that is white supremacy mm -hmm. what's what should be used as a role model for replacing white supremacy the role model for replacing white supremacy mm -hmm. should be a code of thought speech and action not a person never a person and that's also applies to producing justice throughout the world which justice has never been produced as far as anyone who is uh, uh, existing now knows anything about. We don't know what justice would be like. We don't know Never what peace it. would be like. Yes. Never had it. So in the process of producing justice, you need a role model. And that role model has to be a prescription. Uh, mm -hmm. Some ministers have said in the beginning there was the word. Now yes. that certainly applies also mm -hmm. to straightening out race problems. You have to have the words. The words are not correct. Hardly any of the words are correct. The words are designed to support racism. And this is why you have uh, the confusion you have in the schools. Deceit. Uh, yes, the deceit. Mm -hmm. See, the words are designed to support deceit, which is the basic tool of the white supremacists. Mm -hmm. Words are very important in the system of racism, white supremacy. We use words not only to communicate with one another, but to condition the way we see the world and to reinforce that conditioning. Now, non-white people, especially in the United States of America, the so-called United States, uh, many of the non-white people were forced into learning the English language. And there is racism within the language itself. Uh, just look up the definitions of the words black and white and you will see synonyms that expose the white supremacy within the language and it's not confined to just those those particular terms but there are other terms and other synonyms which also demonstrate white supremacy within the language itself so understanding words is most important when it comes to the system of white supremacy racism so mm -hmm. to straightening out race problems, you have to have the words. The words are not correct. Hardly any of the words are correct. The words are designed to support racism. And this is why you have uh, the confusion you have in the schools. Deceit. Uh, yes, the deceit. See, the words are designed to support deceit, which is the basic tool of the white supremacists. Mm -hmm. So your role model would be a code that is designed to counteract all of the words, a code of thought, speech, and action, all of the words, first of all, and then the deeds, 
that would counteract what is already in place, which mm. is injustice. What is what is uh, VGQ? I mean, what does that mean? I don't. That know is a term that uh, recently uh, mm -hmm. I coined. That means so people can remember it easily. The VGQ means Victims Guaranteed Qualification, and the purpose of this is to minimize and or eliminate unnecessary conflict between the victims of racism in their confusion of trying to do something about it, like end it and replace it with justice. And the VGQ means you're guaranteed the qualification. You're the victim of white supremacy. Mm -hmm. That's what the victim means. You're guaranteed the qualification to say anything that you want to say mm -hmm about race, racism, or counter-racism. By being a victim, you're guaranteed that qualification. You're guaranteed from birth that qualification. So therefore, no non-white person can tell a non another non-white person mm -hmm. what to say, what not to say, and how to say it on the issue of race, racism, or counter-racism, mm -hmm. because no non-white person is qualified to tell another non-white person well, is. Be reason being, mm -hmm. all are equal victims. Right. You know, I'm glad you said that because oftentimes, particularly in the news, you know, with the media, mother media, if you will, uh, will oftentimes pit one person of color against the other. Well, Mr. Farrakhan said this, so what do you think? Uh, you know, and they want some other black person to comment or and or condemn uh, somebody else. for Not qualified. Mm-hmm. VGQ is one of the uh, one of the most constructive aspects of the code, in my opinion. Uh, it allows victims to feel free, so to speak, to speak on how they see the system of racism, white supremacy, without creating a conflict between other non-white people. Mr. Queen, the interviewer, is uh, bringing up a great point an example of how those in power and white people are the group in power uh, would use non-white people to create division by instilling conflict between one another uh, between each of the non-white people and you will see this oftentimes in the media where they will pit one non-white person against another non-white person and they were so kind of referee this. Uh, I think Mr. Fuller uh, describes this in the code as uh, racial shadow boxing. Um, well, we will we will do videos in the future. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's going to be many examples of how we can delve further into the subject of racial shadow boxing and racial showcasing as well as other aspects of uh, white supremacy racism. But I think this would be a good time to let listeners and viewers know that uh, Just Avore does operate and stand on VGQ uh, quite often. Victims guarantee qualification. Um, as I, as a victim of racism, am qualified to express my views on racism, whatever they are. And I also practice respecting the VGQ of other victims who may not agree with me. I could be incorrect about some of my views. I, I just don't think that I am. But VGQ. Neely Fuller is not qualified to say what Mr. Queen can mm -hmm. say or not say mm -hmm. in regards to race, racism, or counter-racism. Any other non-white person. Now you can you can raise questions or you're qualified to say things to white person, people about things that are said about race, racism, or counter-racism. Reason being, white people are not victims of white supremacy. That's the difference. Can See? you hold that point right there? We have to take a break. Mr. Fuller brings up another point. This, the code is meant for victims of racism, white supremacy. The code book itself uh, has a subline that reads a textbook slash workbook for thought, speech and or action for victims of racism, white supremacy. So VGQ and uh, no contact, no conflict and other aspects, the 10 stops 
are meant for victims of racism, white supremacy, when we deal with other victims of racism, other voids. They are not meant for the interaction of white people. These ideas are created to encourage non-white people to conduct ourselves in a constructive manner. Constructive meaning a manner that promotes justice and the end of white supremacy. That's what it means to be constructive according to the code. So we want to construct, conduct ourselves in a constructive manner with one another and thereby being constructive collectively when we're dealing with those who classify themselves as white. Presumably, just among white people themselves, but when they came in contact with non-white people, then the old royal system switched over to a color system, which is much more efficient, much more dynamic, and has proven to be the greatest political system and the greatest religious system in the known universe. Um, these videos uploaded to Mr. Danny Queen's channel, I believe it's Danny Queen's channel. Um, these videos of this interview on Color Me Poetry uh, are, they're clipped up into different videos. So I have to switch back and forth and I'm unable to have the interview in its entirety with Ms. Fuller. So please, please bear with me um, as I switch between videos. But as you become more familiar with Mr. Lady Fuller and his work, as well as the work of Dr. Francis Crest Welsing and other attempted counter races, uh, you will be able to uh, grasp some of the ideas that are not fully contained in these videos. It's the most powerful. It's an idea that has uh, set off all kinds of ramifications among the body politic of the people in the known universe. Mr. Fuller is speaking about how the system of white supremacy began. Uh, his theory on what led to white people being seen as the most powerful group to be seen as superior to other people, all other people to be considered supreme. Where did this start? Um, because at some point it wasn't always the case. I mean, we, through anthropology and other historical uh, studies, white people are the youngest people on the planet. According to genetics, they are the youngest group of people on the planet. They weren't always here and therefore they weren't always in power. So at what point or how did it come to be that white people were to take this non-white world and turn it around to where they are now the most powerful group on the planet. I know there's going to be some non-white people. This is going to be an uncomfortable uh, conversation. These are going to be uncomfortable thoughts to have. It is going to be difficult to admit the power structure in existence. But again, VGQ. And I don't really have to lean on VGQ to demonstrate whether or not white people are in power. That can be uh, seen in all of the major areas of people's activity, including uh, economics, education, entertainment, labor law, politics, religion, sex, and war. Do white people have the power? The most power. And I would say either you have power or you don't in this system either you're powerful or you're powerless but who has the power in this system of white supremacy who has the power throughout the world in all areas do you have to go to white people for a job do you have to go to white people for what's considered the best education if you want to live in a place that has safe drinking water running water electricity uh, insulated shelter, any shelter at all. Do you have to go through people classified as white? What about nations of non-white people? Do they are they able to operate in their best interests, but and don't have to deal with white people? 
I think if we really honestly look at the world, we will come to the conclusion that the people who classify themselves as white have taken a lot of power for themselves. And they are the ones running the planet right now. They are the ones in control right now. Mr. Fuller is speaking about a royalism system that is the foundation of the system of white supremacy. Let's take a look. Who should be royal. And at one time it was, might have been, presumably, just among white people themselves. But when they came in contact with non-white people, then the old royal system switched over to a color system, which is much more efficient, much more dynamic, and has proven to be the greatest political system and the greatest religious system in the known universe. It's the most powerful. It's an idea that has uh, set off all kinds of ramifications among the body politic of the people in the known universe. White supremacy is a religion. It is a political system. It is a business. And it is also a religion. Let's talk about the first area of, of the nine concepts that you mentioned, uh, which is, uh, is it education, uh, entertainment, labor law, politics, religion, sex, and war. Can we, can we walk through each one of those briefly uh, so we can make an idea? Well, e economics means that the ta use of time and energy. Okay. And the racists, when they looked around at the people that they classified as non-white, they decided, well, one thing, we will have domination over the way that they use their time and energy. And all of these areas of activity, activity are interrelated. Mm -hmm. Economics is interrelated with education. Education is interrelated with entertainment. Entertainment is interrelated with labor, law, politics, religion, sex, war. All of these nine areas are interactive. So, if you're a white supremacist, in order to really be supreme, you have to get control over everything that people do in all of these nine areas if these people are classified as non-white. And of course, being a supremacist, the supremacist always does the classifying, not the victims. The victims cannot classify themselves without the approval of the white supremacists. So they decide that you're black. <laughs> sure. Just like Make a term a that you uh, hear now uh, in popular parlance is the term biracial. Yes. Or multiracial. Mm -hmm. Or what does multicultural. That mean? Now, mm -hmm. these are terms that the victims of racism will have to pick through and right. try to, they are, they are given this selective chart where they can determine if they are biracial and to what degree of biracialism, whatever that's supposed to mean, what degree of colorism, whatever that's supposed to mean. Yeah, because I understand that even uh, coming up on, not yet, but coming up on the census, uh, census forms, they're going to have uh, different categories. Uh, I mean, it's not going to be just uh, black, white, non-white, other anymore. It's going to be uh, biracial and, you know, that, that kind of thing. How, how do you think that's going to affect? More confusion. Mr. Fuller, <laughs> more confusion indeed. When it comes to racial classifications in the system of white supremacy, uh, white people, people classify themselves as white are the ones who, they're the ones who give the okay as to whether or not someone is classified in a particular group. Uh, when, I, when I talk to young people, especially my own offspring, about the system of racism, white supremacy. I, I, I try to put it in the best terms that I think they will understand. And um, I think the most accurate uh, analogy that I could use would be um, white people created this idea. They created this group called white. And they decided that they're going to be in the white group and everyone else is going to be in the non-white group. But that wasn't enough because in war, the best way to win is by dividing and then conquering a people. So they put us in the group of being not white. They said, hey, we're going to be in the white group. You guys are going to be in the not white group. But that wasn't enough. So they said, we're going to take the non-white group, the people who are not white, and we're going to put you, 
on the black team. We're going to put you on the brown team. We're going to put you on the yellow team. We're going to put you on the red team. And you guys, you could be on the other team. And what we see with the racial classifications, especially with the United States Census Bureau, um, which is controlled by the United States government, which is under a so-called rule of the majority. And we know that the majority is based on racial classifications. Therefore, the United States is ruled by white people. And they're the ones who give the OK as to how the Census Bureau collects information and what information is to be collected, including these racial classification categories. And we'll go more into the racial categories because that is another way that not only do they use like a Willie Lynch type of strategy to divide and conquer, but also to spread confusion. Mr. Fuller, again, makes an excellent uh, observation that the end goal of all of this is to cause confusion. It is very difficult for people to create goals that are attainable and to follow through and accomplishing those goals if they are in a state of confusion. And what's one of the best ways to cause and generate confusion? Through deception. Confusion and deception are some of the primary tools, strategies, weapons used by those who practice racism after violence. See, the basic reason, uh, the basic tool of the races is deceit. Yes. So therefore, you deceit is supposed to produce confusion. The more confusion you have, the more deception you have among the victims. Now, the races will not be deceived. Mm -hmm. The white supremacists will be able to function as white people. That will still be their classification. The classification will be white. That's the dominant classification. All of the so-called biracial classifications will be more confusion. And the hypothetical situation would be that you would have then non-white people going into an employment office, making out forms where they will try to find out whether they are part Indian, part Portuguese, part semi this and by that and multi this and multi that. And it will take them all day probably to make out their form. Anyone who is classified as white will come in and maybe in a few minutes make out their applications and leave. The non-white people will still be there at closing time trying to figure out who they are and where they fit into the subordinate and I underline subordinate categories. So it's basically it's going to cause a lot of confusion for a lot of people. Uh, for a lot of people who consider themselves to be multiracial. This is why it's important to always watch the words that are produced under the system of white supremacy. Any type of words that are introduced into the language, mm -hmm. such as multiracialism, multiculturalism, biracialism, take the term multiculturalism. Mm -hmm. Culture is what you do. That's all it is. Whatever people do in any one or more than nine areas of activity is the culture of that person at the time that the person is doing it, whatever it is that the person is doing. There's nothing mysterious about culture. Uh, the victims of white supremacy have a victimization culture all over the world. We have to take a break right here. It's Danny Queen. We're speaking with Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. And we're going to be back shortly. I often hear um, white people, when they speak about their cultures, many would say, when it comes down to it, that white culture is racism. Racism in itself is white culture. Outside of that, I've heard many white people say that the group who calls themselves white doesn't really have a culture other than mistreating non-white people. And th this is how I explain white supremacy 
to younger people when they're having problems and they don't understand um, the, the, how racism works. I basically break it down as, well, what does it mean to be white? Now, as a non-white person, how could we know? But I've heard many interviews uh, with Gus T. Renegade. I've had many conversations with white people myself. I've seen other interactions between white people and non-white people where white people, whether it's uh, directly or indirectly, whether it's intentionally or unintentionally, have given constructive information about who they are and the why they do what they do the way that they do it and it comes down to white people putting themselves in a group and they called it white they put themselves on the white team so that they could mistreat people who are not on the white team essentially that is the heart of white supremacy it leads to this notion of I can do I as a white person can do whatever it is that I wish to do I can do whatever I want to do but you as a non-white person should not be allowed to do what I can do even if that means that I have to sabotage you to keep you from doing what I do if you're able to do what I do, you should not be able to do it as well as I am able to do it. To me, that is the basic, the, the basis of white supremacy, racism. As long as white supremacy is alive and well, a white man's heaven is a black man's hell. Many look, but few see that the most unjust dynamic in the world is white supremacy. Hi, welcome back to Color Me Poetry. I'm Danny Queen. I'm here with Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. And we're discussing his book, uh, Textbook for Victims of White Supremacy. Mr. Fuller, you have a long title here. Tell us about the title. The United Independent Compensatory Code System Concept. Mm -hmm. United means that in theory or in intent, the people who are the victims of racism mm -hmm. and are the white people who are against the proliferation or the, the continued use of racism as a standard for the world's business should be united against that standard. The independent part means that each individual has to do what he or she can to counter racism with the ultimate objective of ending it and replacing it with a thing that we loosely call justice ultimately leading to peace quote unquote now that means that you're independent you are a independent so person so it's not a collective effort it's collective in that you go to the third words third and fourth words compensatory code you become collective by using a code mm -hmm. the code of compensation making up that's what compensatory means, making up for what's missing, right? And you have a code to make up for what is missing. What is missing is the use of truth to produce justice and correctness, which theoretically would equal peace. So you come up with a compensatory code, a way of thinking, speaking, and acting each and every day in all of the nine areas of activity. Then you use that code as an individual wherever you happen to be in all of those areas of activity and right now uh you don't have it's only a concept that's where the word concept comes in see it's strictly theory right now you don't have a concept of white supremacy without the practice because white supremacy is being practiced a concept of the elimination of white supremacy and our racism and our injustice is strictly a concept there's no such thing as justice existing anywhere mm -hmm. on the planet since the definition for justice is guaranteeing that no person is mistreated people are mistreated all over the planet all the time so you just have a concept of justice what you have is practical injustice 
It's the difference between having a concept of justice and having it actually in practice. Now here you say the people uh Mr. Fuller um, makes another excellent point here. Justice being defined as no one being mistreated and those who need help the most get the most constructive help is in itself a theory because those who are making justice a goal don't know what justice actually looks like. Mr. Fuller stated earlier in this interview no one alive has actually seen a system of justice, but we do see being practiced a system of injustice. There's no greater system of injustice, no greater system of mistreatment than a system of racism. And the only functional form of racism is white supremacy. But the goal is to replace white supremacy with a system of justice. Of the known universe, the, it says the people, just reading off the back, the people who have the ability to eliminate racism do not have the power to do so. And the people who have the, uh, the power don't have the will or the ability to do so. Well, that's obvious. Mm -hmm. If you are imprisoned unjustly, it means that you do not have the power to get out of prison because of two factors. You don't have the will or you don't have the ability. Now, those who are the victims of racism don't have the ability because they do not have the will that provides the ability or the ability to provide the will to not be victims also the racists do have the will and the ability to practice white supremacy they have proven that mm. and that's why you say that there really can't be such thing as a black racist no because it has to do with the ability to to it has to do with the power relationship. It has to do with something that you're actually doing. Carrying out. Mm -hmm. You're actually doing it. White supremacy is a fact. A lot of people do not like to admit to its existence, but any comprehensive analysis would show that such a thing does exist. So therefore, you can't have a white a system of black supremacy within a system of white supremacy. It's a total contradiction. Mm -hmm. Regardless of um, regardless of all that has been said or done, the quality of the relationship between black and white people is and black black and white people has been total disaster. Yes, it's a total disaster. What you mean by total is at this particular point, it is total because there is not a quality relationship between white people and non-white people on this planet because of the existence of the system of white supremacy that cuts out any ability of anybody to produce a quality relationship between black people and white people it also uh, eliminates the possibility under the system of non-white people black brown red and yellow interacting with each other or even with white people in a manner that is quality by quality, we mean justice. We mean with truth. We mean doing the correct thing. You can't do it under a system of white supremacy because the system of white supremacy is based on mistreating people and having the people react to that mistreatment. So what you have is just a lot of abuse and reactions to abuse and a continuation of the same. Now, you do accomplish a lot of technical things. Such as? Well, such as uh, production of uh, building of bridges, the building of uh, highways, the building of buildings, uh, of schools that, by the way, support the system, the system of white supremacy. Mm -hmm. Right. And all of these things are designed to do just that. It's a giant ego trip for a white person to be told that because you're white, you are somewhat substantially royal. And so you should act like it. So that's a lot of incentive. Now, a non-white person sitting, say, in a classroom setting mm -hmm. is told directly and directly within the system of white supremacy, now you are being trained to be a victim of all of this. So are you saying that sitting in, that two students sitting in the same classroom can come out with, after 12 years of education, quote unquote, can come out with completely different uh, concepts of themselves and, and different concepts of the society in which they live. Even within though they're the sitting system in the same of white supremacy, within the system mm -hmm. of white supremacy, it is absolutely required 
In other words, the white student is being taught systematically how to be a white supremacist. Mm -hmm. The non-white student is being taught how to be a victim. So you have an mm -hmm. opposite right there in the same, in the same classroom. classroom at the same time. And the so Mr. Fuller expounds that children, again, we go back to the classroom setting. The schools themselves support the system of white supremacy and are able with it to within the same lesson plan within the same curriculum condition white children to act as superiors over non-white people and to condition non-white children to accept an inferior position within society they train white children to be victimizers while training non-white children non-white people to be victims there's many people who are going to have an issue with the word victim or victim of racism victim of white supremacy um, many people think that acknowledging victimization creates a uh, victim's mentality but there is a difference between having a victim's mentality and re simply recognizing that one has been victimized there is a difference um which we could go over at another time but this has been uh our attempt to expound on uh, the code by listening to the words of mr lady fuller jr um directly and I, I like this video by uh, mr danny queen because it is a rare look at mr fuller on video mr fuller is currently in his 90s he's still alive he's still uh teaching about the code and if you speak to mr fuller he will tell you that he is still learning about the system of racism white supremacy he is still learning but in his age he has seen many many things He's been around. He was around uh, with Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X, um, in the Civil Rights Movement, and all the other times that have followed all the way till today. He's currently still with us today, speaking on his observations and the things that he has learned when it comes to the relationship between those who classify themselves as white and those who they have classified as not white speaking from his experiences and his observations mr fuller has come up with a, I think a pretty constructive code pretty constructive way to acknowledge uh to recognize and acknowledge the problem while also creating a, an opportunity for people to as individuals to collectively work towards the same goal of solving that problem so uh, i wish mr fuller well uh i thank him for his work i thank mr danny queen for this interview uh as well as his work as well to to do his part in replacing white supremacy with justice but i think this was a good first review video as uh justivore will be reviewing many videos to come many instances in uh the world of white supremacy and racism what it is and how it works so that we can produce justice i would encourage those uh, who have not to visit producejustice.com uh, mr fuller's uh website where you can get a copy of the united independent compensatory code system concept a compensatory counter racist code uh, a textbook slash workbook for thought speech and or action for victims of racism white supremacy you can get the original edition which was shown in the video but since this interview Mr. Fuller has released a revised and expanded edition that he recommends people uh, would get that one, as well as the word guide, which goes over 
terms that are constructive to use and terms that we probably shouldn't be using uh, as long as there's a system of white supremacy. So I would encourage people to go to producejustice.com and to listen to Mr. Neely Fuller's uh, interviews on the radio. Uh, the Cows with Gus T. Renegade as well are also uh, places that you can find more information, constructive information uh, on the system of racism, white supremacy. But I think this is a good time to bring this video to an end. I'm Justavore. Thanks for watching. Until next time.